When somebody says hot hatch, what do you immediately think of? I'd wager it's like to be a GTI, an RS, or maybe even a Type R. I certainly don't imagine it's the Avromeo Giulietta that springs to mind. As soon as this is packing the same engine and gearbox that you'll find in the rather dramatic Avromeo 4C, does this forgotten hot hatch deserve to be overlooked? Well, as always, let's find out. From the outside, the Alfa Romeo Giulietta Quadrifoglio is certainly more GTI than it is Type R. What do I mean by that? Well, this isn't the car that shouts about its performance. Change over the standard models can be seen in slightly different bumpers, different headlight design, 10mm ride height drop. You've also got distinctive cloverleaf badging and dual exit exhaust at the back. But overall, it's still quite a stealthy package. You wouldn't look at this and go, that's a fast car. Is there anything wrong with a car that's sort of subtle about its performance? Ultimately, that is for you to decide. I quite like it though. I just think there's something cool about a car that can generally surprise people away from the lights. And yeah, from the outside, I don't think this is a car that deserves to be overlooked. Usefully, I forgot to film the wax seats, but as the Giulietta was only available as a five door, it should be more than practical enough for most people. According to the internet, you also get 350 litres of boot space, which is 30 less than you'll find at a Golf, but it looked more than big enough to me. Anyway, that's enough of that. What about the performance? Well, as mentioned, it shares its drivetrain with the Alfa Romeo 4C, so that means the numbers aren't bad at all. The capacity is a slightly odd 1742cc, yet despite this, it delivers a Golf GTI beating 237 brake horsepower. Peak torque is 251 foot pounds. The Giulietta has a 6 speed dual clutch automatic transmission which allows for launch control. As a result, 0 to 62 miles an hour is quoted at 6 seconds and the car can go on to a top speed of 151 miles an hour. As you can probably tell, it's not the loudest car in the world, but you do get a nice induction bar coming into the cabin that means when you're driving the car does sound fruity enough. However, me and Jimmy did come to the conclusion that a new exhaust would probably make for a worthwhile modification. Now I was lucky enough to get a quick drive in a car, so let's see if I do a better job of talking to camera than I did in my last video. Yeah, she goes, doesn't she? Yeah. <laughs> I think one thing this car suffers with, as all modern cars suffer with, is they don't feel as fast as they actually are. No. So you'll be doing 60 and then you'll feel like you're doing 40. Yeah. Like for at the moment we're doing 30 odd. And they're just, it's something that all modern cars have I guess, isn't it? They just feel a bit, they all feel a little bit too refined for their own good I guess. Yeah. yeah. But I think this feels, this feels more to me it feels more direct than the A45 did, it feels like I'm better connected to what's going on. Yeah. The A45 felt like that was in charge to a certain extent. Yeah. No, you have to you have to sometimes grab this bicycle for the yeah. neck and then drive it. Yeah, yeah. But this is more fun I think than the A45 was. Even if I'm not used to paddles so I keep going for a dash if I shouldn't do. <laughs> is that induction bar that we can It hear? is a bit, you know, I think most of it is induction, but yeah, it just gets yeah. pumped out the back. I'm a fan of that, I'm liking it. Feels responsive enough though. Yeah. I'd like the paddles to be a bit nice, you know what I mean? If they were like some nice... A bit more taller, a bit less plasticky. Yeah, yeah. I think that'd be nice, because yeah. these feel a little bit... Cheap. Cheaper plasticky, yeah. like you just said, yeah. Right, sorry about that, yet again I failed to describe anything. To summarise then, I thought the Giulietta Quadrifoglio was great fun to drive and it was easily quick enough. Despite being an automatic, I actually felt involved with what the car was doing and that's not something I've experienced in any of the other modern cars I've driven. And with that being said, I think it's time to ask a few questions and find out what it's like to live with this car. 
Well, we're here with Jimmy. It's not actually your car, is it, mate? No, but, it's a missus. But you're still going to be able to give us some info, aren't you? Yeah. So straight away, do you think these cars deserve more love? 100%. Right. People overlook these and think it's just it's just another Alpha. It's going to break down, or it's not going to be as good as a GTI. But you don't you don't know until you drive one. You've, you've got you've got to experience one right. to to know what it's about, basically. Yeah. So how do you how do you find a performance of it? Do you think it's it's as good as it needs to be? It's it's more it's more than enough for what it is. Right. More than enough for what it is. So what were you was you mentioned the driving mode, so what what driving modes have we got in here then mate? So at the minute so we've got a DNA system, so you've got dynamic, normal, or natural, and then all weather. Right. So your all weather is just it limits everything. So if you say it's like right. snowing or raining or something mm. like that, it will just cut the power and just you know make sure everything's nice and secure. Normal is just your normal driving. Mm -hmm. Decent, you know, your throttle response is just a little bit less than the dynamic. So when you put it in dynamic, mm -hmm. everything sharpens up, your steering gets heavier, your throttle response is sharper, yeah. a bit more noise out the exhaust. Mm -hmm. And then the uh, the most important thing about the, the dynamic mode yeah. is the diff comes the diff. off. Right, has it got electronic diff? It's Q2, it? I'm not sure if it's electronic or not, I don't right, know, I'm okay. not too sure on that. But that comes on in dynamic, That yeah? comes in, in dynamic, yeah. And the rest you, of the mode is off. And do you notice that then when you come out of corners? Is that like... Oh yeah, you can feel, you yeah. can feel the difference when the diff's on. Right, 100%. okay. Certainly quick enough, isn't it? That engine, it sounds quite nice actually. Yeah. It sounds fairly muted and then you get up it a bit and it suddenly, uh, suddenly wakes up, doesn't it? Yeah. So how do you how do you find this car to live with on a daily basis? I know it's not yours, but I'm sure you've had enough experience with it. Is it, you know, is it comfortable enough normally? Is it, you know, how is it? Well, since we've had it, we've had no, we've had no issues. It's it's done exactly what we've asked for it. It's, it's, it's never let us down with anything. It's a good daily driver, um, as long as you can, Except that it uses a bit more fuel than other right. hot hatches. So you've touched on this. What the fuel economy do you get? Because I was surprised when you told me that this was what was it? What, what fuel economy are we getting? Um, on a normal run, it's the same as Mrs. Drive, is it? Yeah. Which obviously is about 32 maximum. Right. But if you if you're giving it some, and you're in you you're driving dynamic mode and. But you probably see about anywhere between 20 and 25, if that. You see, the 2025 doesn't surprise me. It's the 32 on a good day. Yeah. I know it's you know 237 brake, isn't it? But I'd have thought a little four-cylinder boosted engine with an auto gearbox might get above that. But. Yeah. Yeah. So, is there any other quirks to it? I mean, I've found a quirk since filming this video. It's weird with the boot. You sort of press the alpha button to open it, don't you? Yeah, there are little quirks like but, what you said. But yeah, you yeah. can't then open the boot unless you sort of slot a finger up. No, you've got <laughs> it's to. Weird. When, when, when you own an alpha, you, they're, they're not they're not the same as any other car. They're, they're, you've got to you've got to learn the car. Right. Whether it's driving it or like you said, like opening the boot, just something something silly like that. Like yeah. You, they just they take a bit more getting to know than say a Golf GTI or something like that. So how do you find the interior? I've purposely not done a piece of camera because I've not sat in this car before. Um, you were talking about a sat nav previously, is that the sort of weakest point in here would you say? Um, or is there I'd, anything else? I'd say the infotainment system isn't isn't the greatest. Yeah. Um, it's a bit, it's a bit, like I've said, it's, it's a bit slow to respond, it's, it's just a bit out of date. Mm. Um, but the rest of the interior is, I don't know, it's just got I think I like, I like the design of it. Everything yeah. feels solid. There's there's no rattles or bands apart from your Mrs. Keys. Here. <laughs> oh. yeah, yeah, no, it feels solid. Um, the seats are a highlight. These are yeah. obviously, I think these are you only get these on this model, don't you? But these are really nice. Yeah, they are. They're comfortable. They're supportive, and obviously the heaters as well. The only thing that lets them down is the fact that they're not electric. The feature that I like the most, obviously, is is the gearbox. Right. Because okay. I, I, I like just flicking through the gears. <laughs> But it's not it's not always the greatest. Um, it can right. be a bit slow to respond sometimes if you're just in normal mode. Yeah. Um, it can be a bit jerky around town. <laughs> Do you 
find this boot? Like, do you find it too? There's a lag already. There is a bit, but once it comes on, it comes on. Yeah, right. yeah. No, it feels good from here, mate. Yeah. You just feel potent. smile on your face it's like well, I forgot what to say <laughs> yeah I'm a fan of that exhaust the exhaust and engine noise mate so that's good <laughs> <laughs> So is this what this car's made for then? You're yeah, hundred percent. It puts a smile on your face, doesn't it? You can't go wrong with a car that puts a bloody big grin on exactly. your face. You cannot go wrong. So to summarise then, does the Alfa Romeo Giulietta Quadrifoglio deserve to be overlooked? Well, it's a slightly different take on the hot hatch recipe, but no, I don't think it does. It's practical enough, it looks good, and it is hot enough. I've enjoyed my time with this car, so as always, I've been Blee. Thank you for watching, and please subscribe.